many laws of the world remain riddles for orthodox scientists. Research conducted experiments based on destruction don't give them the opportunity to gain true knowledge. But there is another way of understanding the world, which should become the main one. This is a principally different technology of gaining knowledge. This is gaining knowledge without destruction. In this video, we will tell you about the information capabilities of the lion and the eagle, as well as how human interaction with nature affects the person himself. This information was obtained with the help of the controlling clairvoyance and is extremely interesting. The matter is that, unlike other animals, a lion moves around with a prior knowledge of what it is approximately to expect, what may happen to it in the nearest time interval, roughly somewhere within an hour. In order to better understand what is taking place here, Let's turn to a more familiar phenomenon. In big modern airports, planes sometimes land every minute. To ensure safety of flights, flight dispatchers have to see the motion of all the aircrafts that are up on their radar screens in order to direct their flights and landings. Let's briefly see how the radar, or in other words, a radar station, works. The radar radiates a short electromagnetic pulse in a certain direction. If there is an aircraft flying in this direction, the pulse, having reached the aircraft, gets reflected from it and returns back. A point of light appears in that spot on the radar screen. The distance to the plane is determined by the length of time it takes the reflected signal to come back. The next instant, a pulse is sent in a slightly different direction. Then the direction changes a little again. All this happens exceedingly fast. And as a result, the air area is monitored. Thus the radar screen has a complete picture of aircraft's position for the given moment. Such monitoring of air area in terms of professionals is called scanning. So the line has the ability to scan space of future events for the period of up to an hour, besides it sees the events of the future, just like it sees the present events. Please note that instead of calling it scanning of space of future events, it may be called time scanning. Such an expression may be used as well. From time to time, a line shoots out an impulse of consciousness from its chest, and upon receiving the reflected signal, obtains preliminary knowledge of the future events. This impulse is formed in the region of a lion's stomach. It is then reflected from the stomach walls, passes through the brain, and is shot out somewhere from the level of the stomach. This is the first signal. And the second signal, made immediately after the first one, is shot out from the brain, they almost instantly blend, and the resulting impulse is used for scanning time. During the impulse formation, a lion's stomach slightly contracts, becomes somewhat like a rugby ball, and the impulse comes from one of its tops. In the context of the topic discussed, it makes sense to say a few words about the ostrich. Such an expression as the ostrich policy and other comments of this sort are attributable to a popular belief that in the hour of danger, Instead of acting, an ostrich out of fear tucks its head into the sand. In reality, the situation is different. An ostrich is able to scan time up to about one minute ahead. And if it sees a real threat, it runs, runs away. It was confirmed by the ball tossing experiments of American scientists. Even when there is a potential danger, but not yet imminent at the time, and an ostrich knows nothing bad is going to happen to it, it tucks its head into the sand. If the threat becomes real, it nonetheless runs away. I now turn back to the lion. The lion scans time approximately an hour ahead. If instead of an hour it looked into the future, 
let's say an hour and 20 minutes ahead, then because of lack of mobility, it would start getting out of shape. But a lion can't allow this to happen. We must say that in one respect, the lion scanning of the future events differs essentially from scanning the air area by the radar. An impulse sent by the radar is a segment of an electromagnetic wave. It moves through space with the speed of light, whereas an impulse of consciousness sent by a lion doesn't travel anywhere. It does not propagate anywhere. There is no movement. The impulse occurs at once, instantaneously, at this spot or point where a lion is planning to go. The impulse appears at the point as well as is reflected from the point, having first scanned all the surrounding area. However, for a reflected signal, as distinct from a direct signal, there is already a concept of wave propagation. A reflected wave propagates at a very high speed, higher than the speed of light and returns to the original source. Let's go back to the direct signal. In order to help understand what is taking place here, in a simplified way, this process can be seen as follows. When a line needs, for example, to pass through a certain territory, it has a thought associated with it. Let's picture it as a cylindrical column. In actual fact, we are speaking of the shape of information. When the lion had that thought in the shape of a cylindrical column, instantaneously a slightly modified cylinder, say a cone-shaped one, appears at the spot where the lion would like to be. The cone-shaped cylinder appears based on the principle of universal interconnectedness of all pieces of information. And the information in this segment the lion needs is scanned around the newly originated shape. We may see that the originated cone-shaped column consists of two parts. One part consists of what is always in this segment and what is the corollary of the fundamental principle, which is all is present in all. The second part of the cone-shaped column consists of what is reproduced by will, in this case, by the lion's will. By the way, here the will could be accurately calculated, that is, the segment of spirit could be singled out. Spiritual control is a control structure. Spirit controls consciousness. And this hierarchy naturally affects the decision-making procedure. When a line receives the reflected signal, prior yet to processing it by its consciousness, the first immediate decision is made by the spirit, by the spiritual control structure. For example, something wrong is ahead and the lion must bring back. Next comes the reflected signal processing. Here the main load is borne by the consciousness. Based on the processing of the reflected signal by its consciousness, the lion decides what to do in this case, where to run. If for comparison we examine the behavior of the tiger, then the situation here is different. The tiger's spiritual control is substituted by the work of developed consciousness, and that's why the tiger lags a little behind. We can see that the lion significantly surpasses the tiger, as well as other animals in spiritual control. It is this ability that singles it out from other animals, and this is precisely why the lion is considered to be the king of beasts. Even this connection, we examine the corresponding structure of man, the following can be stated. Man has a special separate capacity of spiritual level, and spiritual control goes into the structure of contact with God. So, if desired, Man can evolve very fast. And one more remark. From the given description of the decision-making process, we can see that if the system of spiritual control is highly developed, significantly more developed than the system of consciousness, and if it exercises full control over all cells 
and consciousness itself, then the object will become indestructible altogether because it is possible to create matter and therefore any physical body, including the one of man, by means of consciousness, which is based on evolved spiritual principles. Now let's pass on to a unique representative of birds, the eagle. The eagle also possesses a well-developed ability to scan space of future events. Its first impulse starts from the feathers, though it may seem to be a totally wrong part of the body for that purpose, as feathers may fall out, but nevertheless it is so. The second impulse comes from the eyes. After that, as with the lion, these two impulses blend and the resulting complex impulse is used for scanning time. No other part of the body is practically involved in creating the impulse. But if the eagle's eyes are shut or covered, it sends this system of parallel signals and for that it actuates its body. Other birds are not capable to do this. For example, some tameable birds species, such as golden eagles and falcons, if they are blindfolded, they are not able to scan and thus seek not to fly. Now pertaining to time. When scanning space of future events within an hour, an eagle sees a lot. It has a huge visual field. An eagle sees itself, sees all the processes, accurately registers interrelations, analyzes the entire situation. All this is perceived by means of clairvoyance, that is, of irrational vision. The next half an hour it still sees itself clearly as well as something of what is taking place, but the background is getting blurry. An eagle can see itself very distinctly for up to five or even seven hours. We may see that an eagle, as if emanates a certain filament into space, and with its help, an eagle feels, for example, that there is a problem somewhere and then it doesn't fly there. Some species of eagles may use rational vision just to orient themselves during the flight, and in doing so, they can see even sharper than with the eyes. However, they seldom exercise this ability, as such a form of orientation results in significant stress on their bone tissue. We may add that an eagle is also an admirable master of teleportation. When watching the birds fly, we may see them sometimes fly down and before reaching the ground, fly up again, utilizing an airlifting force. A fine example of such a flight is an albatross. As it gains speed while gliding down, before the very ground, it turns against the wind and soars up. An eagle, of course, can do it too, but we now are interested in a different manner it practices. It's been noticed that sometimes an eagle swoops down at high speed and looking as if having hit the ground, instantaneously soars up over again at high speed. It was thought that after touching the ground, an eagle makes a powerful push off which results in a high-speed takeoff. This, however, turned out not to be the case. Filming performed by Australian scientists has shown that an eagle in these cases doesn't touch the ground at all. This phenomenon has remained a mystery. In actual fact, an eagle foreseeing the future and knowing where it would like to fly if it did push off the ground right away teleports itself to the location where it would be if it pushed off the ground. It just teleports while being still in the air without ever touching the ground. So an eagle had the ability to teleport too. If we look once again at the aforementioned lion, we will see that it represents the structure of man's thought forms. If we look at the eagle from that same perspective, it will become clear that it represents the structure of the events 
man would wish to accomplish. We may continue this sequence into infinity. If we go deeper into all this, we may discover that the entire outside environment, outside in relation to man, is created in images of his manifestation. That is to understand why animals or other entities or matter in general have been created the way they have. To understand this, we have to look at man and his actions. Everything man is surrounded with is his current actions and the effect of his previous actions. It follows that when man extirpates a certain species, he thus virtually affects himself. Genuine ecology is in understanding of this fact. Based on the knowledge I provide, we can say at once what will happen as a result of extirpating a certain animal species by man, what evolutionary species will emerge in the future, that is, what specific form the next animal species will take. We can also say what specific changes will result from the technogenic path of development. Knowing all this, we can balance and create the forms desired. In the future, crossing of species and genera, their synthesis won't constitute a crucial problem any longer, as distinct from what we have today. And if we decide to create a certain mixed species, this will be possible to do. The technology is simple enough here. One has to know the organization of man. So a well-known old-time motto, know thyself, as we can see, has many aspects. Comprehension of this principle gives a true understanding of the world organization and its realization leads to the effective opening of the flower of life. The knowledge voiced in this video was obtained through the perception of multidimensional spaces with the help of controlling clairvoyance by Doctor of Physical and Mathematical Sciences Grigory Petrovich Krabavoy and published in the most interesting book The Resurrection of People and Eternal Life from Now On is Our Reality.